Yay. Okay, it says it's been recording now for like a minute, so that should be good. Okay, you guys ready? Ready to go? Yep. Cool. Okay. That'll pop up, of course, right when I right when I want to get started, and I have a pop up on my computer. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> My name is Taylor. I'm a Marquette Law student. I'll be mediating your case this morning. Uh, before we get going, it would be really helpful if you guys could introduce yourselves. I'm Emily. I'm Michelle. I own Very Good Building Company. Okay, great. Do you guys mind if we proceed on a first name basis? Sure. That's fine. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, now the process we're about to go through is called mediation, completely voluntary. So that means that you can leave if you need to. No one's forcing you to be here. However, I do ask that you both give this process an opportunity to be successful. It, this process isn't like that of meeting before a judge. So I'm not here to decide a winner or loser. I'm really here to help you both work through the issues in the case while I remain as a neutral. So this process is really what you make of it. We have plenty of time to go over everything um, that relates to your case, but please let me know if there's any time restrictions or anything that I need to be aware of. Um, if you need to take a break, just let me know, um, but I don't see that being a problem. And also remember, try not to interrupt each other, but I do know we are dealing with technology, so that's sort of a little added feature. So, okay. Process today is going to kind of work like this. I'm going to finish up my little spiel and then we're going to get going. So first, when I'm done talking, um, I'll let the plaintiff go first and then I'll let the other side respond. I'm going to ask that both of you sort of give your perspective on why you're here today and then we can work through the aspects of the disagreement. There will also be times where I have questions for one of you um, and sometimes those might be questions that you know, are better handled in private. So that's when we would go into what is called a caucus. That just means that I would ask the other person to um, sort of on the honor system with the technology we're dealing with, mute their computers so that they can't hear what I'm talking about with the other person. We can also utilize the chat function um, and sort of work through that. That might help us get through anything that needs to be handled privately. I believe in the chat, you're able to just message one person if you need to. So it's also important to remember a few things before we get started. First of all, anything said here stays here. It's confidential. It means they can't use it um, against you once you leave, even in front of a judge. So that's kind of how the law works in Wisconsin. Um, and I can't discuss um, what each of you said outside of this mediation, although I am a law student and I will be discussing sort of, you know, how the case went, how the mediation went in um, my class with my classmates, but they're also bound by confidentiality rules. So it's also another thing to remember is that I can't give either of you legal advice. So like I said, I'm a neutral. I can't tell you what you should or shouldn't do with this case. And as the mediator, I also have a couple of other ground rules that I'd like you to honor. So that means that I can ask that, you know, if anyone else were to be in the room, I could ask them to leave. You know, I think we're really using the honor system here, so I'm going to ask that either of you let me know if there's anybody else in the room, but I don't see it being an issue to uh, today. So like I said before, we're going to try to work as well as we can with the technology that no one interrupts each other. Uh, I believe we could potentially use the raise your hand issue if it ever comes to that, but being that we're on video, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Just try not to interrupt each other or talk over anyone. I also ask that, you know, like I said earlier, you both give this process an honest attempt. If you're both willing to participate and work towards a solution, I think we'll be able to come to an agreement that both of you can live with. And if you have any questions throughout the process, you can just stop me, let me know your question, I'll answer to the best of my ability. So lastly, I'm going to need both of you to sign our agreements to mediate. This agreement shows you understand that I'll be helping both of you manage the process um, and that the process remains voluntary the entire session. So if you feel that this is not helpful to you, you're able to leave. The agreement also asks that you show that you understand there are no attorneys in the room um, and that I can't give either of you legal advice. However, you're not giving up any legal rights by going through the process. Like I said, if it doesn't work, 
you can still go through the court's process and meet with the judge. This agreement also asks that you understand that I nor Market Law School are responsible for the outcome today. Um, the outcome, like I said, it's really up to you guys. It's up for you guys to determine. So finally, I also ask that uh, to make both of you aware that I am required to report any threats of criminal activity or violence. That's the reporting laws in Wisconsin. So if you understand all of that, please write agree in the chat bar. I have a question before I yeah. do that. Um, sure. As far as you had said that obviously this doesn't take away our legal right, like we can still go in front of a judge. If we were to come to any type of agreement, is that something that gets enforced then? Or is it we come to an agreement and if something happens, then we can still like go forward in a court? Right. So what happens is if we come to an agreement, I would write that up, write up the agreement. And then there's another provision of that agreement called a default. So that means that if in this case, the agreement that you guys agreed to wasn't acted upon and you know something happens and one of you wants to say, hey, this person didn't, sorry, I got to pop up in Teams. Um, you would be able to say, hey, they didn't follow through. I want a judgment against them, sort of reopening the case. And then a default judgment would be imposed on the defendant and we're able to pick a monetary value at the end when we're writing up the agreement to ensure that the actions are enforced. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if you guys are ready to get started, um, who filed the case here? Um, I did. Okay, so Emily, do you wanna give me sort of the details about why you're here today? Yeah, so very good building company, tore down my house and I never agreed to that. I never had any agreement. I think from what I know, they were supposed to do the neighbor's house, but I mean, that's basically why I'm here is they tore down my house without my permission. And now like what I had planned on using that house for is like, I can't anymore. What were you planning on using the house for? Yeah, so I was planning on restoring it. It's a, It was an old Victorian house, and I was going to be restoring it to that era and opening a bed and breakfast. So it was going to be not just, it's. it wasn't just a house. It was also a source of income as like a business. Um, and now I just don't even have that opportunity. Okay. So I hear that you're, you know, upset about this, your house being torn down um, and the fact that you've lost a business opportunity in being able to have that home. So thank you for sharing that with me. Now, Michelle, would you uh, like to give a little bit of details or background information sort of on your perspective? Um, yeah, so I own the Very Good Building Company. Um, we did, I can't speak to the details of working with another client, but we did have a contract to demolish a home. Um, unfortunately, I, I do apologize to Emily. Um, this is a really unfortunate situation. Um, we tore down the incorrect home, which was Emily's home. Um, we've been a really reputable business in this community and done really great work. And I can understand probably from Emily's point of view, um, I doubt she thinks too highly of our business at this point. Um, so now she's sued me uh, due to the described, you know, loss of potential business that she uh, has talked about. And I'm hoping today we can come to some sort of agreement um, because what I've seen in the lawsuit isn't something that um, I think is going to work. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. You know, I hear that your your reputation is really important as a building company. And then you're really um, optimistic that we're going to be able to find something that works here. And I, I too, am really optimistic that I think we're going to be able to come to a solution here. So, you know, before we move on any further, just have some questions that I think, you know, at least one of you would be able to answer. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering, Emily, how long did you own the house that was torn down? 
Um, it had been for a while. Um, let me see. I'm not sure if I know exactly. I'll look at my papers. I think it was like at least a year. Okay. I mean, and obviously with me only owning it a year, it's because I still had to fix it up. Okay. So were you, were you living in the house at the time? Um, not, nope, not at the time, just okay. because since we were going to be starting construction, I mean, that's not a really good living situation. So we were just getting all the contracts underway to start restoring everything. Okay. So um, another thing that I think is going to help us work through a lot of these issues is sort of outlining an agenda and thinking about sort of the main topics of what we want to talk about. I had a couple of questions about the house. So I just want to make sure I understood that. And I'm sure we'll have, you know, I'll have a lot of more questions while we're moving through. But I think um, some of the issues that I'm hearing are the house itself and, you know, its value, whether that be um, what the house is worth at the time it was torn down. I know there's been a mention of potential business. So I think, you know, that's going to be a lot of where our financial discussion is. So we can just sort of talk about the value of the home. I also think it's going to be important we talk about reputation. You know, Michelle, and you mentioned it was really important to you that Very Good Building Company has a good reputation within your community. And so I, I understand that that's an interest of yours, and I definitely think it's something worth talking about. Um, I think that sort of outlines the big two topics that we need to talk about. Is there anything else that you think we should specifically go over, either of you? I think that's a good starting point. Um, I can let you know if anything else comes up that I think we need to discuss, but I think at this point, those are probably the two, the two big things we need to cover. Okay. Can you repeat one more time what the two things you said, the value of the home and... And then reputation moving forward. Um, I think one other thing I'd like to talk about is just also the fact that that took away a business because it's like, okay, yeah, there's the value of the home, but also like it, it took away an entire business opportunity and money I had put forth to start like getting that going as well. Okay. I mean, we can definitely talk about that when we talk about the value um, of okay. what happened, the value of a potential business. I think um, that would probably be an appropriate place in the conversation. Okay. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else throughout the mediation that either of you think we need to, you know, address head on and that needs to be a topic of conversation, just feel free to let me know. I can always add it to my list. But yeah, so just some more follow up questions to get the conversation moving. Uh, Michelle, how long have you been the owner of Very Good Building Company? Um, I, this has been a family uh, company. Um, I've owned it for about 10 years now, um, but, and built it up as a family business uh, with my um, of, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, um, yeah, I've started it about 10 years ago. Um, and I have some other family members working. It's a tight knit group. All right. How many, um, employees, sorry, I'm readjusting in my chair. How many employees do you have at very good building company? Um, I'm not sure that the structure of my business is entirely relevant to the conversation, um, but uh, we have about about 20 employees right now. Okay, and I'm simply asking um, some of these background questions to learn a little bit more about the business um, and sort of how we talk about reputation, sort of your stake in the community and things like that. I hope that explains a little bit about why I asked some of these questions. Okay, and Michelle, do you think you could give me sort of your account of the events of the, 
the day or some of the other events surrounding the teardown of the house that we've been discussing? Um, sure. So uh, we have a contract with a client for that demolition. Uh, typically the day of when we go out on a project, we review um, kind of the, the key details, the highlights, um, and we mistakenly miscopied the address down on the work orders for the team. Um, so the team didn't have access to the original contract. Um, it was the main office's responsibility to communicate that information. And there was just uh, a miscommunication that unfortunately occurred. Um, and the mistake wasn't caught until after the fact. Okay. So it sounds like you guys have a typical procedure for how um, teardowns are usually handled. Yes. And I would like to em emphasize that like nothing like this has ever happened before. Um, we haven't had a need to use any other sort of process because we've always um, done really well with this. So I do take responsibility for that, but this isn't something that typically happens. And as soon as I learned the mistake, I, I tried to do research and figure out who owned the property and uh, contact Emily as quickly as possible um, to make sure that we could work something out um, and that she knew that this happened instead of pulling up to her property and realizing her house was gone. So we, we did our best to try to um, be transparent about that. Okay. Um, and that sort of leads me to some other questions. And Emily, how did you... Uh, learn about the house being torn down. Yeah, so I wasn't, that's actually what I was gonna hopefully comment on next. They didn't contact me for like over 10 days. It, it was like almost two weeks. And I know they said, oh, they tried to research. They tried. My name is on all the documents for that house. I like, obviously, I wasn't living in it at the time, but it's something where, like, had I been in town, I could have just like walked up and then saw them tearing it down and been like, what, what the heck are you doing? But it took them so long and I hadn't known about it. So, I mean, wasn't quite the best way to find out. Okay. So it sounds like you're also a little er, upset about the fact that you weren't contacted as quickly as you would have liked about the teardown. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like almost two weeks worth of time, like so much can happen in that time period as far as like, especially the fact that I was trying to restore it. It's like, okay, here I am ordering like product or hiring people, assuming that the house is still there. Like I'm entering into other contracts with people to try and like have them work on my house, not knowing that the house wasn't even there at the time. Okay. So what were you, I know you spoke a little bit about it in your opening, um, the fact that you're going to make it into a bed and breakfast. So what kind of, um, you know, repairs or what needed to be done to the house? What were you working on? Yeah, so a lot of it, obviously, like old Victorian houses, I mean, there's plumbing, there's a lot of the stuff is like wood. So it's like refinishing floors, repairing any of like, the walls or anything like that, anything that's cracked, cracked paint. Um, obviously back in, like back then, like I said, um, there was the plumbing and all that kind of stuff, but like electrical, cause they didn't have the same standards then. And once you start doing construction on a place, uh, you have to come make it up to code. And so, I mean, there was obviously going to be a decent amount of work that needed to be done, but it's also because I wanted to, it to be, of that time period, but also up to code. So that also meant like specialty products going in, like the floors, uh, especially older floors, um, they have like thinner like boards as far as like, um, as different than what you would see in like, um, like a newer house, you would see like hardwood floors and it's like a thick one. Well, back then it's like, it was thin. So trying to source all that kind of material um, so it was a lot, it was a lot of effort. Okay. So had you already, you know, created contracts for that work to be done? I sort of think, you know, when we're talking about the value of the house, um, it'd be helpful to know 
uh, what kind of numbers we're talking about. So not only what you paid for the home, but if you had already executed any contracts for work to be done on the home as well. Um, yeah, so I had started that. And I also, aside from just even contracts, obviously, like this is a smaller town and I wanted to get the name out. And so like I had spent like $20,000 making sure people knew about this, getting a, the community invested in it. Like, I don't know if you watch any housing shows, but like, for instance, Chip and Joanna Gaines, how they've done a lot for Waco, Texas, like that kind of thing. They, they got really Waco on the map. And that's what I was hoping to help do here. Like it's a new and upcoming area. I wanted to get the community invested in it because it'll bring in a lot, like a lot of money to other businesses as well. So it's like, I had spent money making sure people knew about this project. Um, and that's kind of down the drain now. Okay. So I heard you mention um, 20,000 that was kind of spent on advertising. Is that sort of a fair assessment of what that money was spent on advertising? Yeah. And then, but then aside from that, I also had to take out a loan like to actually make the adjustments, which was at least 150,000. So that's like, you know, to do all the repairs and stuff. And it's like, okay, well, that loan's already taken out. Okay. Can I just comment on a few of the things that Emily mentioned? Yeah, of course. Um, I can understand her frustration that she didn't find out about it right away, but it was difficult for us to find her. She did come into this community. And as she mentioned, she had to do advertising and things because she wasn't well-known. Um, us being a well-known company in the community if she was someone from around here or something we would have been able to track her down a lot more quickly um but she wasn't from here the it was a very private transaction that was pretty recent she hadn't even started work on the property or anything so for us to try to uh, access private transaction records was is not just a simple google search or anything by any means and she was out of town, um, so she wasn't easy to find in town. We didn't have just her phone number listed anywhere that we could just call her up. Um, so I do want to emphasize that we put a lot of work into trying to track her down, and there was a lot of factors why we couldn't um, find her. I do appreciate that she is looking to invest in this community and um, really become part of it. That aligns with what we do um, in the community, but since she hasn't established that yet, that made it difficult to find her. Um, and then another point is Wait, before you move on to your next point, can I just make a comment on that really quick? Um, the fact that I was doing advertising for this, I feel like that isn't something that was utilized to try and contact me. Like we were trying to make this bed and breakfast known in the community and people knew that we were behind it. There was contact information there. I don't think you just needed to look at the records to try and find that so I apologize for interrupting you may continue okay I don't want to argue with you by any means but my business we I can't speak to the effectiveness of your advertising or whether we saw it or not um right so if I can just interject for a second I think um we're having a really productive conversation over what did happen but one thing that we emphasize in mediation is sort of looking at the process and thinking about the fact that we can't change what what happened and I know it sounds like both of you are a little upset about how the communication first took place between both of you especially um, you know with a contentious issue you know not a happy reason to have to interact so I just want to make sure that we're both looking you know we're all looking forward thinking how can we move on from the situation instead of only rehashing what did happen. So um, yeah, that's just another thing to sort of think about as we move forward. But Michelle, you had another point to say. Thanks. Yeah, um, and I think my other point will be more um, productive to moving things forward. When we're talking about the value of the house, um, Emily's described like the work and such that did need to go into it. So when we talk about the value, I don't think it's my responsibility to pay for what in her mind is the end game of a John bed and breakfast. I mean, we don't have any proof how much she was like, what she was going to spend on it. Isn't what she already fixed it up to be what was torn down. We don't know how much money she was going to make from it or any of those things. 
So in terms of my company being responsible for what was in fact torn down, I think we need to really focus on the condition that property was in at that time. Um, what it was going to be isn't something that I'm responsible for or something that we can establish. Okay, and I, I definitely hear that it is, you know, hard to figure out potential values, especially when we start getting into numbers. And, you know, I'm not gonna comment on whose responsibility is what, that's for you guys to figure out, but I, I do know that when talking about potential um, values, that that can be kind of tricky. So um, I guess in going back to sort of some of my questions for Emily, you talked about the $150,000 loan that you took out on the house. Is that for, was that for the price of the home or was that just a loan to do work on the home? No, that was just to do work on the home. Okay. I had spent almost $400,000 buying the home. And I know that Michelle doesn't think she's responsible for like what the business would have been. Okay, great. Say I didn't update the home or whatever. And I kept it in the condition that it was in, even though it was a little bit rough, regardless, even if I had decided to open the business with it in that condition, I can't do that at all now. And that was the whole purpose of this property. So I don't think it's fair to say that they're not responsible for it because they didn't just take away the house. They also took away the business as well. Okay. Um, so in sort of looking at my notes and some of the numbers that we've thrown out, I, you know, I hear that there's a lot of dispute on, you know, talking about the potential business. So Emily, do you have any other, um, businesses you're doing in the community? It sort of sounds like from what both of you have said that you haven't, uh, you don't live within the town. Um, so do you have an invested interest in still doing something there? Yeah, I definitely do. It's the thing that is like my main business focus is historic hotels, bed and breakfast, um, because a lot of towns like to just tear things down and put thing, put new things up. I mean, heck, the whole point was you guys were supposed to tear down my neighbor's house. That's someone who wants to put something brand new there. For me, it's something where it's like, you know, this is an area where people, it, it's a smaller town, but, you know, people love the charm, people love the the attractions, the parks, everything like that. And it's like, you want to make it so that it has some personality. Um, and it was something that this was, even though I didn't sit and live here right now, it's something that was very much like I was invested in. Right. So I think something that we can identify here is the fact that it really sounds like both of you have an interest in, you know, investing within the community. And I think that sounds like that's really important to both of you. So I think that's just something to keep in mind that we can all sort of connect on um, is that you guys want what's best for the community. And I think that's really helpful. So um, just to sort of pinpoint more ideas here. Uh, especially when we're talking numbers, Emily, is there an amount that you filed the case for or a number that, you know, is your ideal, what you're looking to get here? I feel like at the very least they need to pay for the value of the house. Um, I, I'm open to negotiating the other things while I do think they should be paying for the lost business opportunity. Um, especially because that's also that was going to employ people in the community and all that kind of stuff. I, I I understand that like Michelle doesn't maybe think that that's important, but I do think at the very least, like you still demolish the house and that was a physical like there was a price tag on it. So at least that. And is that the four hundred thousand dollar number that you quote or that you yeah. mentioned? Yep. Okay. okay, so Michelle, sort of what, what are your thoughts on hearing something like that? And just as a reminder, if I think we're doing a great job of being respectful and moving forward, but if at any point 
Um, either of you want to meet privately with me, we can talk offers and things. I'm not going to give you an evaluation on if anything is good or bad, but I do know that sometimes when we get to this stage of uh, talking about offers, that um, it might be more comfortable to meet in private, but I think we're being um, efficient or making a lot of progress. Just another thing to keep in mind. So, uh, Michelle. Um, I have a question. I'm wondering if Emily had an appraisal done on the home at the time she purchased it, um, because she does seem very aspirational about the business opportunity and what it's going to be. So I could foresee a situation where she paid more than market value, knowing it could have been a profitable business in the community. And if so, that's not my responsibility, whether she paid a hundred thousand or a million dollars, if it wasn't worth a million dollars, that doesn't make sense for me to pay that. So I'm just curious if there's more information about more solid objective information about the value of the home. Yeah. Can I respond to that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm totally willing to, um, show you papers and stuff and appraisal. Um, I, your comment on the fact that, okay, I'm gung ho on the business opportunity. Yes, I am. But also this isn't an area where it's like really hopping or anything like that. I, I, I do this job so that I can invest in a community and restore old homes and stuff like that. So I'm not going to pay any more than the house is worth, especially when I need to put money into it. Um, this is more of a long-term investment, not like a quick one and done get out there. So like, yeah, I did get it appraised and it's something where, I mean, I, we can always get to those documents if you like. Right, and I think when we talk about documents, um, if it's helpful for either of you to see that, if there hasn't been an open communication with documents, that's something that can be really beneficial at this time, but I'm, it's my job to be neutral, so I'm not going to evaluate any of the documents, but that's between you two. If, uh, if Michelle, if you think it would be helpful to see those appraisal documents, it sounds like Emily is willing to share them. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. One thing I will say, the person that appraised the home is from the community. So I'm sure you probably have, like, since you're really involved in the community, I have a feeling you've probably worked with them before. So I feel like it wouldn't be something that I don't want to say should be argued about, but I feel like it's trustworthy, especially if you've worked with them before. So maybe also if, if that, like we talked to the person that did the appraisal and they've done work for you as well, that that would be something like that could be like a mutual. Yeah. I don't foresee an issue with that. Okay. okay. So I think that's definitely helpful. Um, sort of opening up those lines of communication can really help us make a lot of progress. I think it is tough when we talk about people who aren't in the room, you know, other people within the community, uh, they can be helpful, but, you know, there's only so much we can do with people who aren't in the room. Um, but, yeah, so you talked about the fact, Emily, that the um, you got an appraisal of $400,000. Um, no, so it wasn't an appraisal of four hundred thousand. Oh. I said almost $400,000. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, I would say, like, because I don't have it on me, but I would say, like, I at least paid three fifty dollars for it. Okay. And I don't know in terms of like what closing costs, but I know that that was like the value. Okay. So okay. can I respond, um, just add something? I, yep. for the interest of everyone's time and being transparent, I don't wanna be negative, um, but I'm hoping maybe we can be a little bit more creative about how we go about this, just for the fact that I want to resolve this. I really do. I really appreciate that you want to come into our community. But if we don't come to an agreement today, or you insist on that 350000 or you try to go to court to get that, my business is a local, just community, family-built business. We don't have 350000 Um, That would put us into bankruptcy, and that's just something you would never be able to recover from us. Um, and I don't mean to say that to 
irritate anyone just to be transparent that I'm not able to pay that amount. So if there's anything else that I can contribute, I know I don't know whether you really trust us as a building company at this point, but I can point out other work we've done in the community. If you would be willing to invest in another project, if we could help with that at a discounted rate or, or something else to make up value for you, I just can't pay $350,000. Um, and I don't want to proceed and give you that false assumption that you're going to be able to recover that from us. It's just not going to work. Okay. I, you're right. I don't really trust you guys right now. I would be interested in seeing other work that you've done because like I said, I want to invest in communities and it's obvious that you're invested in this community too. Um, and if you have like relationships with other local businesses and people know you, I mean, I think also that would be a great way to get the word out about doing anything. Is it something where, I mean, uh, like I said, I'd have to obviously see like your work or anything like that, but like, do you guys deal with land? Do you, um, do you do like, I mean, you can do work on an actual project, but like, I guess, what are you thinking in that room? I, I still feel like it's something where I'm going to need to get money because you guys still tore down the house, right. but I'm, I'm okay with exploring other avenues and possibly trying to make this into like a positive thing for our community generally, like seeing me like doing a biz, like coming into a community, you knowing the community really well. And then like community members seeing like, Oh, Hey, like, you know, they're invested in like having community members work here. Like I'm not looking in to bringing in people from the outside to like work at this place or anything like that. Like I really do want it to benefit community, not just in like a location and bringing in business, but also in employing people in the area. Yeah, I can share a little bit more information about that. So the house that we were originally supposed to tear down, it was unfortunately not in a condition that it could be repaired that yours was for the bed and breakfast. Um, so we do appreciate the historic um, features and neighborhoods in our community. And we're really proud of that. This house wasn't in a condition, but the person who owns that house, and maybe I could pass on their contact information so you could hear this for yourself as well still asked us to go forward with the project. Um, and so in our experience in portfolio, we will be tearing down that building and building a new um, business in that location. So that'll bring some vitality to the neighborhood. And I think if you would build another, whether it's a bread and breakfast or a different um, uh, business in that area, it'll be a really um, good bustling area with the work that we're doing there. Um, so that other client has trusted us to move forward with that. I think it's something that'll benefit the community um, mutually. Um, and I can also send you over a portfolio of other things that we've done in the area. Yeah. Is it something where the other person, as long as like they're okay with it, what kind of, and I don't know if they have already given you permission, but like what kind of business it is? Because I guess that, yes, it could bring stuff to the area, but I mean, it also kind of needs to fit with whatever I would be doing. If it's something that like the businesses don't really go well together, like like a hotel and a cafe or a bed and breakfast and like, do they, do you have that information? Can you share that information? So at this point, she is, since she's early on in the project, um, she's still doing market research for the area and what would be the best. So I think, I think it would be best for me at this point to maybe pass on her contact information to you. Um, because I think you guys could help each other out. Uh, she has not solidly decided what will go there, um, but definitely something. But I just thought of something else too uh, that I think could help. So you mentioned that you put a lot of money into marketing in the area as well. And the owner of this property um, helps local businesses run advertising in the community. So I'm thinking if I connect you with her, she may be able to help you with that as well. Um, okay. I, can't, I know I can't um, promise thing from another person, but I think the businesses in our community really try to lean on one another and help each other out. So I'm thinking if like we make that connection that you can get the most out of your property and the dollars you've spent in this community. Okay. 
that's something I can consider, I guess. I'll just have to talk with them and see, because even maybe it'll be something where I can work together with them on helping them decide what kind of business. Maybe it'll be like complimentary, um, but I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah. Right. And I think, um, Michelle, you made a great point. We can't find someone who isn't in the room to anything, but it does sound, um, you know, I'm not going to evaluate anything that's going on really, but does sound like some progress has been made in sort of a continuing relationship uh, between you guys. And that that's something, you know, especially we need to consider going forward is sort of what does the relationship between both of you look like um, if we were to settle today? That's definitely just something to consider. So um, I guess, you know, because I can't really bind anybody to a potential business relationship in the future. Um, I guess I just wanted to hear if Michelle, if you have any other things you want to add when we're talking, um, when Emily's talking about uh, recouping value within the house, I think we've sort of gone over the gambit of potential value, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the um, sort of her initial offer talking about the 400,000. And now that we've brought in the idea of also a continuing relationship. I really don't want to put forth an offensive offer, but I think I could pay and keep my company afloat at around $150,000. Um, and offer um, services if you'd be willing to give us a chance to help you rebuild a business, um, discounted work to kind of cover the rest of that. I know you mentioned you took out a 150,000 construction loans. You intended to put at least that into the business opportunity. So I think we could at least do $150,000 worth of work. Um, at, at low to no cost to try to help you recoup that. But any more, if I'm doing free work and paying out money, then that's going to be really, really hard on my business. That's where I'm kind of at. Okay. Well, and I understand you weren't trying to be offensive or anything, but the fact that I just paid $350,000 on the house itself and I'm, I lost that through no fault of my own. I, I don't think I could go down that low realistically, even if you were offering services, because I mean, that's just me losing so much money as it is. Um, and that's aside from like all the other money I put into it or the loan or any of that kind of stuff. So I feel like at a minimum, I mean, I already said 350 was a minimum, so I feel like I'm already really bending here. Because even if I were to like not move forward with anything, it's like, okay, well, there's still that amount I'd be out. I could maybe do like 275 because if you think about it, that's some I would still be losing $75,000 through no fault of my own. I don't want to place this responsibility on anyone else's shoulders but are you able to get insurance money or anything else to help you uh, with that loss well that yeah that wasn't something that was done yet because I was still trying to figure out what to do for that for the business generally um so as far as I'm aware I'm I'm open to looking at it is it something where you guys have any insurance we are um, not that would cover this, no. Hmm. Unfortunately, um, I'm actually taking out a loan to be able to pay you. So I have a maximum amount that I've been approved to take out a loan to be able to pay you for this. Okay, what is that amount? It's $200,000 is what I've been approved for which I know is below what you just said. So I don't know what to do at this point. So you've been approved for the 200,000 loan through a bank. So that wouldn't be coming out of your business though. 
we don't have any cash reserves to pay out on this. Like to get you anything, I have to take out this loan because I'd like to keep all my employees employed and everything. So I, I, we just don't have the reserve to contribute. Okay. What if, what if we do the 200,000 and then like 50,000 of um, future work towards whatever project I look at doing. We can do that. Okay. Um, so just to summarize and make sure, you know, everybody's understanding of where we're at, I want to make sure that I'm on the same page as you guys. Uh, it sounds like right now, Michelle, what you're offering is $200,000 through that loan and then an extra $50,000 worth of work on um, Emily's next project in the community. Is that a fair summary? That's what I was understanding, yes. Is that what you were understanding, Emily? Yeah. My only concern, I mean, obviously, is like if for some reason I can't find a new location or a new project like where it would make sense kind of then what happens as far as like it's already kind of risky for me to be like oh yeah fifty thousand dollars with of future work with a company who already mistakenly torn down my house tore down my house anyway so like the two hundred thousand part is fine I'm just a little uneasy about I, I like the fifty thousand dollars of future work especially because like like I said I do want to invest in the community but if for some reason I can't find another project or it just doesn't make sense because like now the physical building that I was planning on using isn't there like then what um it's tough to think about you know when we get into sort of the idea of conditionals and sort of if then what um but do either of you have any information on sort of what the uh, the real estate market is like in the community? Um, I know you said, Emily, that you bought the house only a year ago. So I don't know if you had a perspective on what the market looks like right now or if, Michelle, if you have any other uh, knowledge about any properties that exist. Because, you know, it, we don't want to... Um, sort of hamper the progress we've been making on, on settling here? Um, my opinion of the area is that it is um, increasing in value. Our other client who is intending to, you know, build a business in the area, that'll definitely increase the value in the area. So even if Emily had to, say, sell the empty lot, I think the lot itself will continue increasing as other projects in the area are completed. Um, Obviously, I'm not a real estate expert or able to do like a market analysis, but that's just my impression of the area. Okay. Yeah. And it's something where I also feel like the area is like a good area to invest in, even if it's not going up in price. Again, I do historic hotels and bed and breakfasts for a living. So I'm not necessarily always looking to like, oh my gosh, make a ton of money. I'm looking to invest in a community. On like second thought as far as like, because I'm a little concerned as far as the contingency on future work, especially because like, obviously I'm still not happy with the fact that the building's not even there anymore. Um, if you could do 225 as a settlement, with the potential of $25,000 of future work, I, I think I could live with that. Oh boy. Um, I was just thinking of another idea, but I don't think this eases your concern. I was thinking for the default amount, we could do 250,000 because if a default were to come about that would give me time to make some more money on my other projects but I don't anticipate defaulting and that whether you can find another project or not doesn't affect 
that extra cash amount. Um, I just, yeah, 200000 is the most I have the loan for. Um, um, and, you know, I appreciate that you, um, you know, thinking about the default, that's definitely something we want to consider um, as sort of a way to ensure that um, something gets done. You know, we're talking about a lot of contingencies. Um, but that's definitely something we want to consider moving forward. Somebody, I guess I don't quite meet, I don't quite understand what you mean by default. The default, it's sort of what, um, you had asked about it at the beginning of the session. So I apologize if I didn't give a very good explanation. No, it's um, probably just me, to be honest. Fine. When we're writing up an agreement at the end of the day, we can put a number at the bottom. And since Emily, you're the plaintiff in the case, if Michelle does not um, complete her end of the agreement, you would be able to take that document to the court and get an immediate judgment against Michelle for that amount. Okay. And so, so what did you want to do, Michelle? I was thinking we could do 250000 for that. So like worst comes to worst, that you would at least get $250,000 that you could enforce in court. Um, okay. But I don't anticipate defaulting or I have the $200,000 loan, so I can just give you that. Um, okay. Well, and I mean, and again, I want to work towards a resolution, even if that means working towards things in the future. Maybe if we do 250 and you do the 200 up front, we can always do like either a payment plan or a, um, again, talking about that future work. Um, so maybe it's something, but like at least the 250 is in writing then. So like, if it's something for, I, I don't want to make any assumptions. I'm not saying like you're a bad business or anything like that, but in, I still want to protect what I'm doing as well. And since I'm already going to be losing money, I think I would like at a minimum to have that then where I could go and enforce that judgment. Okay. Can I uh, just describe an idea I have and then we can see what your thoughts on. So we could do $200,000 today because I can get a loan for that. We could do 50,000 for a payment plan because that's, that's in stone then. Um, and then I would like to, we've discussed reputation a bit. If I could have you agree to refrain from saying anything negative about our business, since we have gotten this, we are resolving it today. And I will also promise to connect you with the homeowner from the other property to see if you two can work together and figure out what's best for this community. So I can promise to at least make that connection, which would hopefully increase the likelihood you could find another project. But if not, we still have the 250000 in stone. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I would say the only thing about it is that I would want to reserve the right if you do default that you don't, or like that, that I won't not promise to say something bad about the business. Like, I feel like, okay, if you hold up your end of the bargain and you do the 200,000 upfront, you do the $50,000 according to whatever payment plan we set up, then like, yeah, I won't say anything to like jeopardize like the business's reputation. However, should you default, I feel like I should be able to have that right to speak out about it. Because, I mean, you did already demolish the house. And, I mean, people are going to be a bit confused now, especially in this community where things travel fast. The fact that there's going to be two houses demolished right next to each other. I, I, I mean, I understand uh, your concern and that kind of negative outlook. But I think I'm confident that we'll be able to, over the course of repaying this, change your mind about our business. So I'd be willing to agree to that. Okay. Yeah. So if we do, just to make sure I'm understanding, so we're going to do 250 
we're going to do as long as you hold up your end of the bargain with all your payments on time and everything like that. I won't make any like public sentiments or whatever about your business. But if you were to default, then I do have that. I, I am allowed to speak out about it. Right. And if, I just want to interrupt to uh, mention that if there is a default on the agreement, then the agreement itself is void. So we wouldn't, you know, there wouldn't be anything enforceable upon you, Emily, if um, Michelle were to default on the agreement. Okay. So if she were to default on the agreement, say like the agreement, because she says she has the 200000 so okay, that's fine. So then the 50000 that would be in the payment plan, if for some reason she defaults on that, it is something where I can take that, excuse me, and go and get a judgment against her, though. So that's yeah. enforceable. So it's more of the reputation aspect that would have the issue? Right. I'm just saying that... Um... It would like go away, I think. So like if I default the agreement for you to not say anything about me, you just go to the court and get your money. So you're not held to that anymore because yeah. the agreement is done. You know what I mean? Okay. So it would be something where it's like, I could still speak out about it then because that's not an enforceable issue. Okay. I, I think that's fair because I kind of feel like that gives me a little bit of security and, and you said you're going to change my mind. So, and I'm open to that. Um, and I guess we'll see. Oh. I think the only other thing I'm going to be concerned about is the timeline for the $50,000. I'm sure you want the money as soon as possible to start another project. Um, but with me paying out this loan and doing discounted work for the other homeowner, which isn't your issue. I just want to make sure that there isn't a chance of default. So I'm, I'm going to need a bit of time for the $50,000. Um, I think that's reasonable. I guess how much time are you considering? I'm doing some math right now to just see what that would look like. Cause I was obviously looking at like, if you were to pay it per month, but I mean, how much time would you need up front before, or are you looking at having before you make that first payment? We could either do, in my mind, monthly payments, but spread out like over a year. Or if you needed to do a shorter time, like six months, like the first month or two lower payments. And then we could do higher payments towards the end when we're making a bit more money on projects again. Okay. So I guess how much oh. you need the money. Okay. Taylor, were you going to say something? No, um, I was just, if this part of the conversation hadn't gotten started, I was going to try to kick it off just so that everybody is aware of uh, the scope and sort of the timeline of things, but you guys are already on the right track. <laughs> okay, how about, I like your idea of it being paid over a year. Would three months time in the beginning to not, like, I, I give you three months and then you start paying and you pay over that nine months, would that be fine? Uh, let me just do the quick math on that. So then it would be, so we wouldn't have to pay the first three months, which would be really helpful so we could start paying back the $200,000 loan. And then it would be $5,555.55 a month for the next nine months. Yep. That's the math I have. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do now, is it sounds like you guys have come to an agreement, um, I'm just going to summarize sort of what I have. And then because I have both of your emails and we're doing this virtually, I'm going to type it up and I will email the agreement to both of you in okay. order to get signatures. So just to summarize what I have, I have that, Michelle, you're going to pay Emily, two hundred thousand dollars up front. Did we step? We didn't establish a deadline for that money. How do you feel about thirty days after we sign the agreement? That'd be great. Okay. So thirty days from today. So um, by five p.m. on May twenty-third, can I mail you a? Uh, 
um, something or would you, I don't know what your address or where you'll be. How would you like me to get that to you? Um, I think it would be best if we did like a bank transfer or anything, just because I don't want to rely on the postal service, especially with that amount of money or anything like that. So like maybe it's something, I don't know, Taylor, if you can do that. Like, I don't obviously want to give out my bank information, but we can facilitate um, that kind of transfer. Okay. Is that fine with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So just sort of going back, resummarizing, making sure we all know um, what you guys are agreeing to. So Michelle, uh, as we stated, is going to pay $200,000 to Emily uh, by bank transfer by 5 p.m. May 23rd. Following that transfer, there will be a three-month, uh, I'm going to call it sort of like a leeway. Uh, once that three months is up, Michelle is going to be making installment payments of, I think you said it was like 4000 5000 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, like August 25th and then every month on the 25th and we'll do that same by bank transfer yeah okay okay unless like I and maybe this is a minor detail if it were to does it I guess it doesn't really matter if it falls on a weekend because as long as the transfer is initiated on that date I'm fine uh, the only day I'm seeing that would be an issue is October is a uh, Sunday, um, so maybe for, of, sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, well, it's just say, for maybe dates like that, if it's, if it ends up on the weekend doing it the, the weekday before that weekend. So if the 25th were to be on a Saturday or a Sunday, instead we do it on that Friday before so that by the time the next week come, comes around, it's in the bank account that makes sense i think we can we can write that in so that uh bank transfers are done um by the 25th and if they fall on a weekend are done the preceding friday yep that's good okay um so that fifty thousand dollars will be paid over the installments for nine months beginning um on august 25th and then uh, Emily is agreeing to not publicly disparage the company in any way. And Michelle is also agreeing to pass along the contact information of the other client who is developing business in the area. I can give you the name of her as well now in the agreement, if that would be helpful. One thing I would like in the agreement, even though I know you guys said that, okay, the thing becomes void and it's not enforceable against me. I would like it still written in there if okay. if for some reason uh, they were not to follow through that. Because uh, I just want that acknowledged that, like, then I am allowed to speak about what happened. Would that go on the default provision? Like, upon default, I would owe 250000 and Emily would be released from any responsibility of not to speak publicly disparaging the company. Okay. Would you be more comfortable with language like that? Sure. Okay. So, um, and then as you guys talked about the default, we were just getting to that. So in the event that um, Michelle doesn't complete her responsibility in this agreement, a default judgment of 250,000 will be awarded to Emily and Emily will be released from any responsibility of not publicly disparaging the company. So I will type up that and I will email it to you to get signatures. Um, other than that, though, I think you guys have made a lot of progress, obviously come to an agreement, which is always the, uh, you know, the result that we want in a mediation like this. So I just want to thank you both for your time. I really appreciate both of you coming here and being willing to work with each other and get this done. Thank you. Yeah. I would just, oh, I wasn't say, I would just like to say, you know, I, I do hope that we can work together in the future for the benefit of this community. So please know that, I mean, obviously I'm trying to protect my business interests and stuff like that, but like, I do want to be fair and I do want to 
try and work together for this community in the future. So I do appreciate the fact that you came in too. Yeah, thank you. Same as well. Um, thank you for understanding where I'm at at my business and what the limitations were for us coming into this. I'm glad that we were able to work something out. Great. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you. All right. So then are we done now? <laughs> you guys are done. I mean, it's one of those things where watching you guys go through a case where I wrote, like that I wrote and I'm like, oh, I should fix that. Oh, there's some, like, there's room here. I should add more details about X or like, I should work on this. But you guys brought up really cool points that I hadn't thought about, which is one of those things where I'm like,